Why do people assume that you are of a certain ethnicity just because there's one particular feature on your face? We got to talk about this. Yeah, there's this Reddit post. It's titled, do people ask if you're mixed race because you have large eyes? On the internet and IRL, people ask me if I'm mixed with a non-Asian race because if I have I have large eyes. Is this really an uncommon feature for Asians? I feel a bit offended when they ask this because it sounds like they think that all Asians have small or slanted eyes. Um, this is the girl right here, Andrew. I believe she is... Chinese Filipino or Filipino. And uh, basically, this just led to a bunch of questions, to a bunch of responses of people saying, you know, I've been mistaken for this. I've been mistaken for that. And basically, it brought up a lot of questions about do people, including Asians, stereotype too much how their group should look? Mm, I think so, man. And there's lots of stories. Like, even for me, obviously, I get, I still to this day get mistaken for Korean a lot, but I think it's primarily my eyes, right? I guess you would say eyes with like the shape of mind that are monolid might be more occurring more in amongst the Korean population, possibly plus my hair too. My hairstyle might be viewed as more of a Korean hairstyle, I, but I will tell you this, even though I never say I'm Korean and I don't speak any Korean and my last name is Fung, people still mistake me for Korean. It's because probably, I guess, what people are going off of is probabilities, right? Right, But they don't understand that every group has a gigantic variance. And we used to have an employee that worked for us. He looked Kazakh. People thought he was Central Asian. He went and took 23andMe after a hundred, the hundredth time somebody asked him, and he popped up as 99% Korean. Right, so he was not mixed at all, even though he looked like mixed race. I mean, David, even you, because of certain features on your face, like your light brown eyes, people have asked, if you were mixed. Right, which is crazy because basically <laughs> people, I don't feel like I look mixed at all, but I'm just saying that people- Davido Mofongo. Yeah, might be part uh, of 20% Dominican. But I'm saying that I think that people just literally look at one trait that you have that's on the bookend outside of the bulk distribution of your group and are all automatically like, you don't fit in. Yeah. David, I also do want to point out you've also been asked if you're a part Filipino, part Viet, and part Korean at all different points in your life. So you apparently have a mishmash of different features on your face. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, far ranging all over the Asia yeah, so map depending from on East what, Asia to Southeast David, Asia. David, depending on what feature people focus on in your face, you will be perceived as more Korean or even Filipino. I would say my <laughs> lips are Filipino. Um Guys, there's four main types of mongoloid Asians, and they all are easily identifiable as Asian, but they all have different probabilities of certain traits occurring, all the way from Siberian, Andrew, to East Asian, uh, which is Japanese, Korean, Chinese. Then you have Southeast Asian, and then you have Austronesian. There's even Melanesian, which is not even on this map. But even within these genres, Andrew, there are subgenres. Yeah, and I think uh, we're going to go into some other stories uh, from comments, I guess, just to see what's relatable to you guys. But just remember that people are just making assumptions only based on what they know. And honestly, most people, even other Asians, are uneducated about this kind of thing. Point number one, Andrew, people only know what they've been exposed to within their lifetimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Non-Asians in America are going to have a more simplified sensor than Asian Americans. Would you agree with me? Asian Americans will even have a less advanced radar and sensor than Asian Asians. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If you just have like straight black hair uh, and like one Asian feature... You know, to most people, everybody's like, oh, they're just Asian or, oh, they're just Chinese. And then amongst Asians, people are like, oh, the eyes are Korean. Oh, those lips are this way. Oh, your skin tone. Right. You're a little bit tanner. Are you Filipino? It's like, dude, there's tan East Asians. Do like, you, what are you think talking about? that people feel extra comfortable being really confident about Asian issues, even if they their knowledge base is at a lower tier? I mean, listen, I think a lot of people, depending on if... It's a guy who's approaching a Asian female, or if it's an Asian man approaching another Asian, whatever the 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 context or incentive is, there's a sense of people who they want to be able to get you right, right? They they feel like ah, I got you, it, I knew it, what you were. Ha -ha. Is, it, is it saying like is that giving themselves some power of like I have an accurate sensor for yeah. judging things or something? Yeah, I mean we all do it to some level. You know, I'm not gonna say that I don't feel. 
uh, some type of, you know, good feeling when I when I guess someone's ethnicity, right? Obviously, ha! I got gotcha. you. <laughs> obviously, I think my my guesses are a little bit more educated, but it's not necessarily a guessing game. Who cares? Like, and especially when the people who like second guess you, that's the craziest. That's the craziest when right. someone's like, "Oh, you're Korean." I'm like, "No, I'm not." And they're like, "Are you sure?" And then I'm like, what "I have you just said? told what? you I'm not." Okay, you got me. <laughs> Okay, I'm part Korean, yeah. Um, I just think the general nuance and knowledge about Asians uh, in America is really low at a baseline. And sometimes Asian Americans, we can adopt that low baseline okay. too, unless we do independent self-driven research on Quora's and Reddit's and uh, you know this paper, that paper, Let, let's scientific, be, non-scientific. Let's be clear here. There are a lot of different Asian people out there and even amongst the Chinese, what is considered Chinese, people can look very, very differently. It's a Listen, huge country. Yeah, there's people who look like they have more Western features from the South side of China that are not Western at all. And then there's people who look very Korean up North, but they're not Korean at all. So really like, or they look Mongolian or Kazakh from the West or whatever, you know what I mean? But I guess, isn't that how stereotypes work? Like, let's just say, for example, let's address her original OP's question. Do most Asians have small eyes? I would say that 60%, at least 60% of Asians have smaller eyes in my opinion. But that doesn't mean that four out of 10 is not also a huge percentage. But I feel like the way stereotypes work is like people would go off to six off out of 10 and then just say it's 100%. Right, right, right. I mean, for example, I, to be even more specific, I would say of East Asians, yeah, maybe 70 to 65% If you're have, Mongolian or South, it, it might be like 80%, right? Yeah, maybe they have smaller eyes, right? You know, um, and I think it's not just the smaller eyes. It's the, uh, times it with the double eyelids. This is when people say it's your eyes. You mean the monolid? Yeah, when people are referring to your eyes, when, when someone just says, oh, it's your eyes, it's, they're actually referring to <laughs> your <laughs> double, your eyelid crease, whether you have it, a monolid or double the eyelid. The phone. Yeah, and also your eye ridge. So this, if it protrudes out, is a little bit more of a Western feature, like the Neanderthal. That's what they call it. Listen, okay? That, they call it the eyebrow ridge of the Neanderthal. Uh, so if you have a slightly flatter face, which a lot of, like probably 67% of Asians do, that's what is going to be a more Asian feature. But, That's but, people, but, but you could fall outside of that and still be 100% of that country. Yes, you could. Yes, of course. Um, like we said, we had the worker. Everybody thought he was Kazakh. We, we could go everywhere. And then he had to get the 23 Me. Point number two, Andrew. Asian Americans typically have a worse sensor than people who grew up in Asia because people in Asia will really be familiar with the nuance and variance of possibilities within their country. So I'm saying here's the thing. Non-Asians, I'm just going to throw them out of the equation because a lot of them, to be honest, I know there's a variance. A lot of them don't know a lot. But I think sometimes Asian Americans, we think we know everything, but we might just be at like six out of 10 knowledge. I think, but I would not assume that just because you grew up in one city in Asia that you know everything too, though. Yeah, that's true. Because like just, you can be pretty, you know pretty dumb you can be pretty ignorant and uneducated even growing up in asia yeah 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 but you would you would guess if someone has traveled around china that they have seen a multitude of different types of chinese people who still identify as chinese yeah. right but not even everybody has traveled everywhere so i don't know right uh point number three andrew not all asians have taken 23 and me but they probably should why should they? I what, think, David, this, this video is not sponsored by them. Why, why should they take a DNA test? Well, I think that taking a DNA test would just more let you know, like, maybe your own history, but also that I do think that people are more mixed than they probably think that they are. You know, just because borders and stuff have been porous throughout history and different tribal human migration and things like that. And I think it would just help Asians feel more unity in a way by actually knowing their differences. Mm. Like I said, you know, Siberian, East Asian, Taikadai, Austronesian, there's a bunch of hybrids and subgenres of these. And uh, for example, Andrew, did you know Central Asians are a mixture of Siberian Asians, Russian people, and Middle Eastern people? So if you ever wondered why Kazakh girls are hot, that's the reason. Sounds like a mix, right? <laughs> I'm serious. Pop up some photos of some Kazakh girls. So I guess what I'm saying is like, no, none of the Asians, we're going off how much education the Western world has on us. Mm. But we're not doing the research as if we're like actually trying to understand ourselves. Right, right, right. And I think 23andMe and all the granular data, and I'm sure you could plug it into WeGene and et cetera, et cetera, into different things. Um, point number four, Andrew. 
here are the actual average faces from each country in Asia. I've got the charts. So, Andrew, more recently, this is a composite of thousands and thousands and thousands of faces from every single Asian country. And you know what the funny thing was? I was looking it up, Andrew. AI computing now does a version for actresses and actors, and they also do a version for the average person. Oh, interesting. Because I think the, uh, the media photos are mostly of actresses and actors. It was kind of throwing everything off. Right, right, right. Because obviously, let's be honest, Andrew. They generally look way different from the average population. Mm -hmm. I guess what I wanted to just tell people, and, and it goes back to the OP's original question of like, hey, do all Asians have small eyes? How come if you just have a pointy nose, people think you're Hapa, people have you this, people think you're another race. There's something called a bell curve distribution chart. So basically you have your bulk distribution, but then you have a lot of people on the bookends, which easily could fit into the normal distribution of the population, but they're just not the bulk distribution. Right. So I guess why is that, like, if we can apply that to grading curves, why can't we just view the way people look that way? Well, you know what, you want to know the truth, man, because people are just going to assume you are the ethnicity that they want you to be. That if it serves their purpose in that moment for you to be mixed Asian or you're Korean or Chinese or you're Filipino. You're just a different Asian than what you are, right? They will just... A, you trick themselves because most people man if they like hope you're a certain group or they just think so because they're just like ah that person like is acting a certain way and i associate the way they act with more of a different ethnicity i'm gonna assume them and they have to be that and if they say they're not then i don't believe them because then that breaks what I believe in my mind. Right. People have a selfish incentive. Yes. And people also have are narrow minded. And so honestly, like most people, they can't take in like complexities into their brain. So they're just like, yeah, you are just what I think you are. Right. And if you're not, that's just going to blow but, my mind. And then that's a new data point. I have to remember for next time, God, that's going to be complicated. But you know what I don't like is sometimes people will see the complexity in pop culture in a pop in the Kardashians relationships or something like that, but they won't even see the nuance for Asian things, even if they're Asian, because we're not taught to care about those things in America. Yeah. Lesson. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Has this ever happened to you? Has this happened to any of your siblings or your relatives or maybe two siblings in the same family perceived to be different ethnicities because of like just the way people stereotype this group looking this way or that group looking that way? Let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.